In this video, we're going to talk about another way to represent graphs of functions from R2 and R1, and that's by using things called level curves. So you, you heard me talking about level sets last time, and so we're going to talk about how to use those directly to visualize what a function is doing, right? Just to get a better interpretation uh, of what the function really does. So another way to do this, uh, so this, this really harkens back to topography, right? So topography, what happens in topography? Well, you get a map. And the map is going to illustrate all the elevations in your county, say. And this is very important for, say, water drainage. Right? If, uh, if I put a big slab of concrete, then I'm going to have water moving in some direction. Where is it going to go? Well, I have to look at the topography. So let's say this is at, uh, you know, 10 meters, say. This chunk is going to be at 20 meters. So this is the 20 meter line. And then maybe we've got two peaks developing over here at 300. Or, sorry, 30, say. So 30 are, are these guys. And, and generally you might have uh, a solid and then a dashed line denote when a new gradation is occurring. So that's really good. And we can also use, uh, we also see a lot of the time, we see things like isotherms, for example, in, uh, in weather maps. You get your weather map, and It'll say that over here I'm going to be in the 10s, over here I'm going to be in the 20s, and this is still the 10s. And I might have some, some color indicating that this is really cold, this is a little bit cold. And then over here at the 30s we might not have anything. Right, so instead we'll just say, oh, this entire block is associated with those numbers, right? So that's that's two rough ways to to understand or graph a function in a different way, but that's still very useful. You know, heat heat maps and topography are very useful to visualize things. So a quick example of what we might do. Our, our go-to nice function to think about is f of x, y is equal to x squared plus y squared. And if we drew what was going on in that picture, right, say this is 1, this is 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, this is 1, 2, 0 over here. One, two. Well, corresponding to the level set C is equal to one, I would have this as my curve. And so it would say uh, C is equal to one, say, where C is what I'm setting F of X, Y to. And over here, I might say that for this circle, right? C is equal to 4. So that, that circle is really mutilated. It gets distorted, but you get the idea. You can draw maps like this, and they're really useful to help you visualize what's going on as well. Now in terms of economics, we'll talk about isoquants. So isoquants are level sets for production curves. Suppose you have a production function that's q of x, y is equal to x times y. Just x times y. Very simple. Say this is x is capital and y is labor. 
Well, if we set c equal to x times y, then we have that y is equal to c over x. And this defines the level set. And of course, x is never 0, and y is never 0 in this situation. So it makes sense here, and it's, it's nicely defined. And our isoquants are going to be the, the swoops, but at different, at different levels. Right, so this would be the swoop corresponding to, say, I5, where C is equal to 5. And this might be the swoop corresponding to I10, where C is equal to 10. Now, the level curves of the utility function Those are called indifference curves. Because the consumer doesn't really differentiate between any two commodity bundles on that same level curve. And you, you can draw these same, same kind of curves just as you would with isoquants, but we call them indifference curves instead of isoquants to distinguish between production, versus utility.